Welcome back to Paul's Tech News. The world is a harsh and miserable place, and the tech news often reflects that. However, there are fleeting moments of transcendence when we can also glimpse the world's goodness and beauty as well. And thus we continue, trapped betwixt the light and the dark, the good and the bad, the yin and the yang in this endless and interminable struggle. And while there will always be those who attempt to thwart our efforts to help the good side win, what with their scams and their virus-laden malware in the context of the world of technology, there are also those who labor tirelessly in order to make the world a better place. And I would like to highlight some of those stories today as well, even if it's just a matter of making technology slightly more affordable for the huddled masses. So welcome all. Thanks for joining me today, and let's take a nice, evenly balanced look at this week's tech news. Excellent. Today's video is brought to you by Micro Center. This is one of my favorite places to buy PC parts. So if you're building or upgrading your PC, I highly recommend making your way down to one of their 25 retail stores in the US. They have consistently competitive prices and an excellent selection of PC hardware and other tech goodies. And they have a custom PC builder on the Micro Center website. Use it to spec out your rig and it will show you parts in store at your nearest location while ensuring compatibility. Then you can pick up in store or have their pros assemble it for you. So click the sponsor link in the description to find a Micro Center near you. We begin this week with Intel, whose efforts to devise increasingly more deadly bodies of water in which to immerse their customers have reached new heights. Forget Raptor Lake, where you were drowned while being devoured by raptors, which after all means bird of prey, or Alder Lake, where I assume you were drowned while a bunch of trees looked on impassively. Now we have Panther Lake, a code name for their newest CPU architecture in development, where they clearly intend for people to drown while being stalked by bloodthirsty giant cats, black as midnight, who move noiselessly amidst the reeds and rushes. Toying with you and feeding off your fear before dispassionately moving in for the kill, we can only imagine. And sure, I might be taking these architecture code names a bit too literally, but why else would an unnamed Intel graphics hardware engineer have updated their LinkedIn profile this week to disclose this information, if not to warn us all of the dark and deadly peril that will soon be stalking us all in the dead of night. The info was quickly taken down, presumably because the engineer was eaten by said panthers, but not before the folks at Tom's Hardware grabbed a screenshot. CPUs featuring Raptor Lake architecture will have an iGPU based on Intel's XE3 Celestial GPU architecture, and more could be revealed at Intel Architecture Day 2022, which the Tom's Hardware editor didn't seem to realize is in the past. Perhaps Architecture Day 2023 then? But Panther Lake is coming after Meteor Lake, Arrow Lake, and Lunar Lake, which are also conceivably things that could kill you in a lake. And Lunar Lake was previously Intel's most distantly planned CPU architecture expected in 2024. So Panther Lake will probably arrive somewhere around 2024 or 2025. God help us all. Next, the sneaky folks over at NVIDIA tried to pull a fast one with their super fast and super expensive RTX 4090 this week, and it wasn't by limiting supply so prices would stay sky high. They just do that these days, no attempts to be sneaky about it. No, this is a die change, as revealed on Reddit on Wednesday. The latest batch of RTX 4090 Founders Edition cards use a die labeled AD102 301A1, as opposed to the AD102-300 variants that have been found in 4090s previously. There's been limited testing as few of the new chips are out in the wild, but one would expect the performance difference between the two to be somewhere between zero and negligible. The silicon change theoretically allows board manufacturers to use a less expensive voltage comparator circuit in the PCB. Not that we expect any of those savings to be passed along to consumers, of course, but in practice, the updated die does require a new VBIOS and is not backwards compatible with existing AD102-300 VBIOSes. The voltage limit is also a bit lower at 1.07 volts versus 1.1 volts previously, but hopefully that just means the new chips can operate a bit more efficiently than the old ones. It's an interesting development either way, though, so big thanks to Reddit user CavitySearch123 for being so thorough in probing out those details. Speaking of cavity searches, Asus is the latest motherboard manufacturer to get a bit particular about what gets inserted into their backside. 
the backside of their motherboards, that is, with the latest Tough Gaming B760M-BTF motherboard featuring rear-mounted connectors, a la Gigabyte's Project Stealth or MSI's Project Zero. It's not just a project for ASUS, though. It has a very real and serious name called BTF, as in the Tough Gaming B760M-BTF. BTF sounds like back to front to me, which would make some sense, except I guess it's backwards, but actually ASUS says it stands for Back to the Future, which is remarkably dumb on multiple levels. It risks copyright infringement, it's not an accurate acronym, which I find very offensive, and it does nothing to elucidate what the product is or how it's beneficial. It only reveals to me that someone in ASUS marketing believes this is the future of PC gaming, and perhaps could use a cavity search themselves so their head can be removed from their respective backside. Aside from the marketing nonsense though, this tough board does look properly clean and well outfitted, adding not just connectors but an extra M.2 slot to the PCB's butt side. And the only real question is what case you'd need to pair this up with for those cable clutter hiding ports to line up properly. That hasn't been revealed, and since the board is only listed on the ASUS website for now, we'll likely see a custom case to go along with it launching soon. But personally, I find this push to completely hide cables from PC builds to be a bit self-defeating. PC building is about choosing your own parts from a wide variety of compatible options, but if you're locked into using a specific case just so you can properly route your motherboard cables, it veers a bit too close to a proprietary solution for my tastes. The remaining tech news for today was so chaotic and yet so terse that I had no choice but to slice it down the middle so as to create some sense of order. And so, my friends, I present to you two installments of tech briefs, beginning with dark and traumatic stories which represent evil tech briefs. Now, now, with, with twice, twice as, as much, much evil. evil. AMD's Radeon software team has been working for years to restore their reputation with well-designed drivers, so they're probably not happy with this story. Both recent Adrenaline packages, 23.2.1 from mid-February, and the more recently launched 23.2.2 update can brick a Windows installation, albeit in rare circumstances. PC World editor Brad Chocolate Sauce Sharkus encountered it, though. Basically, if you choose a factory reset driver installation and and Windows is also doing a background update, you can be hit with BSODs and boot loops that lock you out of Windows access. The short-term fix is to not choose a factory reset driver installation. The long-term fix is for AMD to actually address this properly with an updated Adrenaline version since it's been happening since last month. Speaking of dumb PC things, remember when UEFI BIOSes came out and they had Secure Boot and it ushered in a new age of PC security? Well, no longer, as this latest Evil Tech Briefs installment indicates, UEFI Secure Boot has been circumvented by malware for the first time ever. The malware is a UEFI boot kit called Black Lotus, proving again that hackers are better at giving their products cool names than PC hardware marketing departments, and the details of its nefarious workings are well laid out in the Ars Technica article, which is linked in the description. While Black Lotus can completely compromise a system, the good news is that the malware relies on a Windows vulnerability that Microsoft patched back in January 2022, and it also requires administrator-level permissions, meaning a PC that is essentially already compromised. Speaking of failed PC security measures, remember when Windows 11 launched and forced everyone to use a TPM 2.0 module for, you know, security purposes? That was just last year, come to think of it. Well, TPM 2.0 security can be bypassed now too, thanks to two buffer overflow vulnerabilities that could potentially impact billions of devices. When exploited, it allows the reading or writing of two extra bytes past the end of a TPM 2.0 command, which is enough to disable a TPM module, execute arbitrary code in its protected memory, or read the sensitive data stored there. Thankfully, not all TPM 2.0 modules are affected, and the Trusted Computing Group, which is in charge of the Trusted Platform Module Standard, said they're just gonna remove the word trusted from those names so they'll stay accurate. Speaking of trust, if you got a call from a loved one in distress needing cash ASAP for some 
vital purpose, would you trust them? Well, maybe you shouldn't, as the brave new world of technology has brought us yet another thing to worry about. AI-generated voice impersonation, which scammers are now using to pretend to be someone you love who needs help. The FTC says over 36,000 people were victim to calls impersonating friends or family in 2022, and most of those were likely not aided by AI voice modulation to make the scammer sound just like Mima or Pop Pop, who need bail money ASAP. I think scammers who play with people's trust and goodwill are among the most miserable lowlifes who exist in the world, so make sure your family and friends are aware of this potential scam, set up secret passwords or phrases to verify identities, and remember, the biggest indicator of a scam is that they need cash now and they need it immediately. Hoist those red flags. But let's wash away the bad taste of those evil tech briefs with their antithesis, good tech briefs. Four of them, too. Old, low-res video kinda sucks, and not everyone is set up with an RTX 30 or 40 series GPU to try out NVIDIA's super resolution feature, which is quite good. Well, now the rest of the world can upscale and sharpen internet videos, too, as long as they use Edge, where Microsoft is enabling the video's super resolution feature, and have an RTX 40 series, 30 series, or 20 series GPU with tensor cores, or a Radeon RX 5700 to 7800 series GPU on Team Red's side. It'll work on videos with a 720p resolution or lower, and the videos must be DRM free, of course, but if requirements are met, you can toggle it with an HD icon in the taskbar of Edge. After hearing about this and Edge's AI-powered chatbot in the past month or two, I must say I'm surprised to hear so much positivity about the Microsoft Edge browser in 2023. I did not see that coming. Many of us saw this coming though after a bug with the NVIDIA 531.18 game ready drivers was reported last week that caused 10 to 15 percent CPU usage to continue even after a game was closed out, a hotfix has been released, driver version 531.26. On the plus side, the issue is resolved, but on the minus side, it was caused by a telemetry service running, aka those little bits of software that track your PC usage and send info back to the overlords at NVIDIA. And isn't it great how in order to use the hardware that we buy, we have to install software that tracks our behavior and sends massive amounts of data back to the manufacturer, providing zero benefit to us and potentially hurting our PC's performance when it's not implemented properly? Yay! PC gaming. I stopped by Micro Center last week and I had a real nice time. The one drawback to Micro Center has always been limited locations though, so it's good news that they are planning to expand this summer. Store number 26 is slated to open in Indianapolis on June 23rd, 2023, and two more stores in undisclosed locations are supposed to open in 2025 as well. It's a different experience shopping in person for PC parts versus online, and they stock slightly more niche tech like Raspberry Pis and 3D printers as well. Micro Center CPU prices are typically lower even than e-tail sellers like Amazon and Newegg too, so I'm glad that more stores will be accessible to more people soon. And speaking of access to technology, remember when AMD announced the AM5 platform and the Ryzen 7000 series of CPUs and they said, hey, we're gonna have $125 B650 motherboards. They quite literally put that on a slide and then AM5 launched and it was like 200 bucks minimum for a decent motherboard. Well, I'm not going to claim that the debut of the ASRock B650M-HDV will make up for that miss in expectation versus reality, but when it went up for sale on Friday with a $125 price on Newegg, it at least made good on AMD's promise, albeit five to six months later. The board has two DIMM slots and two M.2 slots, is a bit short on USB connectivity, and lacks RGB, of course, but it does have a 2.5 gigabit LAN port and BIOS flashback. I'm curious about the VRM performance with higher end CPUs, but we'll have to wait for independent reviews to suss that out. Either way though, it's good to see a more modestly priced AM5 board on the market. Now do GPUs too. Anyway, there you have it guys, tech news for the week. And if you liked it, click that like button or leave me a comment down below. While you're down there, all the articles I talked about today are linked in the video's description if you are interested. And you can also check out my store at paulshardware.net for high quality merchandise, t-shirts, hoodies, beer sets, and more. Subscribing to my channel is always a good call too. Thanks again everyone, and we'll see you next week. <laughs>